Hi, how's it going? Good, thank you. What, what brings you in today? Smelly Belly, rainbow oh. hip bands, and powerlifting. We're here for the seminar. I'm watching uh, Sarmageddon, uh, and I've been watching a few of the podcasts too. First time, it's everything. It looks like it's everything I've seen on Instagram for the last few years. Hey, uh, what, what brings you in today? Just came to look around. Are you, are you here for the seminar at all? Yes, or? I am. I came to see Mark Bell in the Super Trader gym. So while I have everyone here locked in, and while I have hopefully at least some of your attention for a little while, if I'm going to teach people how to lift, I always like to teach people how to live as well. I like to research a lot of stuff, and I like to look up a lot of information on <clears throat> people that have been like legendary in history. People that have had a huge impact on the world. People they make monuments of. People they write stories about. And one of them that I came across recently was Benjamin Franklin. A lot of people know him for discovering electricity. But something else that, something else that Benjamin Franklin did was he had these witticisms within the context of these this uh, crop data that he used to produce for almanacs. So he would do something similar to what I'm doing today, where he would share information, he'd blend it in, he'd give people values, he'd give people other forms of benefit, mixing it in with something else. And so today, those are some of the things that I'm going to do. Something I've learned over a long period of time is that some of my weaknesses as a kid, some of the struggles I had as a kid, of being labeled dumb, of being labeled stupid, of being called retarded, of being put in special classes, of not being able to explore uh, speak, you know, trying to speak a different language or play an instrument. Uh, I didn't have those opportunities because they were like, shit, this kid can't even get English together. He can't even get simple math together. So let's have him you know, kind of work on some of the basics. But it ended up being a huge strength of mine later on in life. I've learned over a long period of time that diligence and persistence is the mother of good luck. And a lot of luck and fortune has been placed upon me just from simply working hard. And one of my major goals in life is to just simply not be a dick <laughs> to people, be kind to people. And to share information with people. It's just very simple. It's a very simple approach. And then I try to backtrack from there each and every day and think of what is something that I did today? What did I give somebody today? What did I gift somebody today? And sometimes it's even myself. Sometimes it's selfish. Sometimes it's just something that I did for me in particular to try to make myself better. Because that is one of my goals. I do want to try to get better every single day in some, some way shape or form. This morning I got better by teaching somebody that's never deadlifted, never deadlifted before how to deadlift and she ended up deadlifting 200 pounds. So to me that's putting up points on the scoreboard. And when I think about how I've been able to put up points on the scoreboard for me, I like to share it with you guys, not in a sense that I'm trying to brag about it, but in the sense that I'm trying to show you guys what I've learned over the years. I'm 42 years old, and every year that birthday cake has more candles on it. But I don't want it to ever have more candles on it than I do uh, accomplishments. I want to always try to have more accomplishments every single day, every single month, every single year. I talk about putting up points on the scoreboard. A lot of it involves uh, abstaining away from desires. We have these certain desires. We've got these, these goals. Uh, sometimes even they're just wishes, right? But your wishes have to turn into desires because a desire is something that you will seek out and that you will do something to move towards. A wish is you saying, ah, oh, I wish I was 10 pounds lighter. I wish I could learn how to lose weight. I wish I could lose weight. I hear people all the time say they can't lose weight. I've never seen that to be actually true. One thing I love about powerlifting and about strength training is I've never seen it to be true that somebody can't get stronger. Everybody in this room possesses the ability to be stronger than they are today. 
everyone in this room possesses the ability to be a little bit better than you were yesterday. I oftentimes say cowards talk about what they'll never do. Don't end up being that person. Don't end up being the person that talks about things that you will never follow through with. That's too much negative information for your body to handle, and you will end up being that way all the time, and you will end up making excuses because excuses are like a nice, soft, warm blanket to keep you cuddled in and keep you comfortable with continuing to lie to yourself about what you can do and what you can't do. Other people will fill in the blanks for you and tell you how bad you suck at this and how bad you suck at that and how dumb you are. A lot of these same people that have said these things to me are people that I have now taken out to dinner with and they have so kindly passed the bill along to me <laughs> to have me pay for it. And I'm kind of thinking to myself, if I'm paying for this, I'm not sure who's smarter, who's figured out life a little bit better than the other. But as I've gone through life, I've learned that my weakness, being dumb, has actually helped me a lot because it took me longer to do stuff than most people. For example, I was doing uh, some math homework with my dad one day, and my dad showed me how this equation worked out. He showed it to me, and 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 he showed it to me, showed it to me, showed it to me over and over and over and over again all the way to the point where he was brought to tears because he couldn't understand why his son couldn't learn it. I started crying as well. I'm like, I'm like Dad, I, you know, I don't know, man. I just, I'm not wired that way. I guess I just, you know, I guess I just can't figure it out. And you know, he was like, you know what, don't worry about it. You'll figure out other ways to, to kind of get things done. And my parents have always been super supportive of me. And it just, it, that kind of stuff, though, taught me the lesson of, Okay, if you're going to like figure out anything, it's going to take you a really long time. And so as my dad was going through the steps and he started to break it down in different ways, I did actually start to understand some of it. Some of it finally started to come through. So it wasn't that I absolutely couldn't learn it. I had to learn it in a different way and it took me longer. What is powerlifting? Powerlifting is comprised of three movements. It's a squat. It's a bench press, and it's a deadlift. Powerlifting meets are really quick, right? They're really fast. <laughs> Powerlifting meets take forever. They're really fucking slow. It's annoying how slow they are. They take all day. Powerlifting in and of itself, powerlifting workouts, they're really super fast, right? They're really quick. No, they're really slow. They take a long time. You have to be slow, you have to be slow diligent, and persistent in order to make it even through a powerlifting workout. In order to even understand what it's supposed to feel like to be stronger, it takes a long time. You have to move slower. You can't explode through a movement and lift it like a maniac and have your body learn what it's like to move the weight properly. You have to slow down. Think about any sport that you've ever played, whether it's basketball or football, baseball, martial arts. What do they always have you do? They have you kind of, you'll do, a, you'll do a, a practice, you'll do a scrimmage. And the coach will have you run plays and go through different drills. And the coach will say, that looks like shit. We've got to slow it down. We have to slow it down. We've got to go slower. Let's, let's see what it looks like at 70%. And the coach says, okay, you're still not getting it. Let's see what it looks like at 50%. Okay, now you're getting it. Now you're learning it. Let's do, it a, let's do some repetitions. Let's do some sets at 50%. Let's do some sets, let's do some reps at 60%, 70%. Okay, boom, now it's time to spar. Now it's time to go into that scrimmage. Now it's time to go into that game. And now it's time to go into it full blast, right? Powerlifting and life has worked out for me in the same exact way. While I was going towards wanting to squat 1,000 pounds and bench press 800 pounds, I was working on building my business. I was working on trying to invent and trying to create and trying to be a little bit different than everybody else. I was trying to be original. That's what separates out people that are great from people that are normal or people that are average is, is simply the fact that someone is original. 
It doesn't really have to do with whether they're smart or whether they're strong or whether they're fast. It doesn't really have to do with their wealth. It has to do with them being original. And sometimes the wealth comes along with being original. And sometimes some of the other things come along with being original because in order to be original, you have to be confident. But I didn't know all these things when I was a kid. I didn't know all these things when I was struggling with math. But what I do know now is that I got to where I got to. I ended up getting to a 1,080 squat. I ended up getting to an 854-pound bench press, a 766-pound deadlift. I still have the highest total in the history of California with a 2336 total. I recently did a 500-pound bench after retiring a couple of times. I've done a 578-pound raw bench press in the 275-pound weight class as well. And I'm very proud of those accomplishments. But they didn't come without a huge fight, and they didn't come without taking a really long time. What I see a lot of people missing, what I see a lot of people not understanding is the points that you're going to pick up, they're not any harder than you just going around the corner rather than cutting a corner. So I see a lot of people in the course of a day, it's nighttime, it's nine o'clock, they're getting ready for bed. They're like, oh, maybe I should take a shower so I'm ready for the morning because I wanted to work out in the morning. And they say, screw it, and they end up watching an extra TV show. And right before they go to bed, they're like, oh shit, like tomorrow's Monday, I said I was going to get back on my plan with lifting, and I said that I was going to go on a diet. We're all starting on Monday, right? Monday rolls around, alarm clock goes off, you went to bed a little bit later than you should have, maybe you had an extra drink or two that you shouldn't have, and the whole day starts to slide away from you very quickly. Those hopes and dreams and those desires, those things that you said you were going to do, they're already washing out of your brain because now you're starting to be in a rush. You, you turn your snooze, and do I have a camera in everybody's house right now viewing exactly what you guys are doing sometimes, right? You hit the snooze button a couple times and you're setting yourself up later and later in the day. And then instead of when you get to a corner, instead of coming around it, you end up cutting a corner. You're like, oh shit, I don't have time to prep any of my meals today. I gotta just hop in the shower and I gotta get out of here. So without any thought towards your nutrition, you leave the house, boom, corner cut. Quarter number one is cut. Oh man, I said I was gonna do fasted cardio today but I don't have time, I gotta rush off to work. You rush off to work, you didn't get your cardio in, boom, corner number two is cut. We could have picked up two points already, but now not only are we not ahead on points, we are in the negative. <laughs> We're in the red already. We're already screwing up that bad. And over a period of time, as fatigue settles in, maybe you had a frustrating day at work, you had a long day at work, you told yourself you were gonna you know, start this new deadlift program, you're all fired up, you're getting ready to go to the gym, and then it turns out that you have, to stay, you have to stay at work longer than you thought. And then you're like, shit, I gotta stay at work, now I gotta pick up my kids when I'm on my way home, and corner number three is cut, ba-boom. What happens is, you start having some movement without any progress being made. And so you're just going like this. Does this look impressive? <laughs> you're just literally, literally spinning around. You're, you're chasing your own tail. You're going in a circle, and you're not making any steps forward. What I would like to see everyone do is embrace the idea of not only taking a step forward, but using a stair as a reference. Because you should not only be moving forward, you should be moving upward as well. Onward and upward. One foot in front of the other each and every single day. It's not as hard as you think. It's about consistency, it's about diligence, it's about staying on top of yourself, it's about trying to devote yourself to a regimen. It's going to be hard. It's not going to be easy. I can't sell you on anything being easy. Dieting isn't easy. It can be, once you get used to it, it can be easier than what you're used to. It can get to be a little easier. Training can be easier. Being big and jacked can be easier to a certain extent. Being strong can be easier but you'll have to get over the hump first. All this stuff is actually really, really hard to do. It's not that complicated, though. It's actually very simple. The simplicity is where the magic is, 
because the simplicity ends up being so difficult for people to comprehend. It ends up being a lot harder than you ever expected it to be. And as soon as life starts to wear you down, as soon as fatigue settles in, we turn into cowards. And remember I talked earlier, cowards talk about what they'll never do. You had these hopes, these dreams, these things that you wanted to do, and you're not ever having the opportunity to get them done because you're letting life kind of beat you down. What does this have to do with lifting? What does this have to do with bodybuilding? What does this have to do with powerlifting? It has everything to do with it, and then some. If you're going to be strong, it's going to take you a really long time. If you're going to be jacked, it's going to take you a really long time. Anyone in any gym across the entire world that has any amount of muscle on them where you would agree and say, hey, that person looks pretty damn big. That person looks pretty damn impressive. At least a decade of work has gone into that. Every once in a while, you run into a genetic mutant, and it took them five or six years. But for the most part, we're talking about a decade of work. Anyone who has acquired a really good skill set of strength, we're talking about a decade of work, 10 years of work. What a horrible story that is, right? What a, it's, a, it's a shitty message in fitness to try to sell somebody on. Hey, you know what? Like, this is going to be sweet. You're going to mess up a lot. You're going to make a lot of mistakes. You're going to go backwards more than you go forward, probably. But in about two or three years, you'll start to get the hang of it. And then another three or four years from there, you'll start to like really understand what it all means and how it all works. And then another three years from there, you'll kind of sort of be maybe, <laughs> maybe if you're one of the lucky few, you'll have the physique and strength that you like. There's actually very few people in fitness or in powerlifting that are even as strong as they want to be. There's very few people that are in a gym that are even remotely happy with their physique or remotely happy with their body. You're only as happy as you make up your mind to be, said by somebody much smarter than me, Abraham Lincoln. You're only as smart as you make up, as you make up your mind to be. You're only as smart as you, you're only as, no, I'm sorry, it's not smart. You're only as happy as you make up your mind to be. Just think about that. You're not going to be any happier if you bench press 225 than you are if you're benching 185. In fact, the moments that you guys are going through right now and getting the progress that you guys are getting right now, I'd trade, I'd trade a spot with you any day of the week. If I, just did, if I didn't have a wife and children, I, I, would tra- I would trade my life for yours right now, regardless of finances and everything else, because I love training that much. I love training that much. I would just trade it all out for whatever it is that you guys are doing because there's something that you guys have that I can't purchase back, and that's time. And I can't ever get that beginning sensation, that beginning feeling back of what it was like to be that hungry and to be that fired up every single day about training the way that you guys are now. And I appreciate every single one of you for taking the time to come out here today. We're going to give you guys some really awesome workouts today. I'm going to give you guys some really awesome information But powerlifting, it's going to take a long time. Strength is not cultivated overnight. It doesn't happen in a week. It doesn't happen in a month. That's why my gym is free and there's still not that many people here. I say it's free all the time. We talk about it being free all the time. We send that message out into the ether. And uh, people, I think, sometimes don't, don't really think that it's free. But it is actually free. But if it's free, why isn't there like a million people here? It's probably because I'm a dick, but <laughs> yeah, that's probably the main reason. But a, a, big, a big reason is just because this shit's hard. Powerlifting is really hard. If you want to p- play powerlifter here and there on the weekend, it's not too bad. But if you want to try to be a powerlifter consistently for a long time, you want to try to do it for decades, you know, I'm, I'm always so pumped when somebody comes back into the gym after an injury. I'm like, oh my God, thank God. I thought we lost that guy or I thought we lost that girl. I thought, they were, <laughs> I thought they were done. Because usually that's what happens. Somebody's in here for a few months, they squat 600 pounds, they're all fired up, and then it's like, oh man, they hurt their hip or they hurt their back. Never see them again. There's different levels of this stuff. There's different levels of strength. Having the strength, having the courage to come back after an injury is a huge part of powerlifting. Having the strength and the courage to stay in your own lane and to sometimes... One of the greatest strengths I've, I ever see inside a super training gym is someone saying, you know what, let me take that 25 off because I'm not doing it the right way. 
we normally only see that in bodybuilding, where a bodybuilding coach will say, you know what, you don't, you don't actually, we don't, even, we don't need all that. What we need you to do on your squats is not lock your squats out all the way. We need you to get a good, uh, a good rhythm going, and we need to keep t- constant tension on the quads. We hear that in bodybuilding. We don't really hear that in powerlifting. We don't really see people practicing in powerlifting, but we should. We should take the weight off. We shouldn't be lifting like shit. We shouldn't be rounding our backs over excessively when it comes to a deadlift. We shouldn't be falling forward in a squat. Our, our bench press, our squat, our deadlift should not look like two separate lifts. It should look like one lift, and it should be nice and clean. You should look like a professional when you're lifting. Each and every time that you lift, each and every time you go up to the bar, you have to prove to yourself and everybody else that's there with you, if you train with other people, that you know how to actually do the lift the right way. You know how to execute the lift the right way. And if you do the lift the right way, guess what? You're not going to go to jail. You're not going to go to hell. Nothing bad's going to happen to you. Actually, a lot of good things will happen to you. And if we go back to the math reference earlier today, in school they used to say, you have to show me your work. How did you get to this answer? You can't just randomly have an answer. You need to show them how you got to that conclusion. Strength training is no different. You can't just say, I, walked, I did a 600-pound deadlift for the day because that's not enough work. Maybe for that particular day and maybe randomly, yes, testing your strength, probably not a bad idea. But testing your strength and working on your strength are different things. If, you only show, if your only work for the day is a 600-pound deadlift and you do that every week, then you'll always just be a 600-pound deadlifter. You won't be able to be any stronger because you didn't tra- change any variables to it. You didn't change any reps. You didn't change any sets. You didn't challenge yourself in a new or different way. And maybe that 600-pound lift doesn't look very good. Maybe the form and technique is all out of whack. And if the form and technique is all out of whack, you're more than likely over a period of time to get hurt. And you're also not ingraining how you're supposed to be doing that lift on a consistent basis. I have power lifted everything in my whole life. When I learned how to lift and I started being able to execute bigger lifts, I started taking that outside of the gym. And I started to recognize, if I just take my time with stuff, I'm not as dumb as everybody thought. I can actually handle a lot more than I thought I was capable of if I just slow everything down a little bit, if I just take my time with it. So when it came to taking powerlifting outside, all I did was slow everything down, take my time with everything. What is powerlifting? Again, it's moving slowly from one set to the next even. Bodybuilding, we only got a minute rest usually. Sometimes we're supersetting. Sometimes you, have, don't, you don't have any rest because you're doing like a drop set or something like that, right? Powerlifting, you know, ask a powerlifter how long they rest in between sets and they're like, however long it takes. However long it takes for me to be ready for the next one. Some of them might lie to you and say four minutes or something, but no one's, no one's keeping count. It's probably six minutes or eight minutes. And in a powerlifting meet, it could be 12 minutes. You could have 15 people in your flight. It could be could be a long time before your next lift. You're just you're waiting as long as you need to wait so you can do the lift again. Outside of the gym, wait as, as long as needed. Wait until you're recovered to do the next thing. Wait until you learn something the right way. Wait until you've mastered something before you go moving on to something else, before you go trying something different. On top of that, why not embrace what you guys embrace today? Why not try to go to the best? Why not try to learn from the best? Why not try to see it all? Why not try to do it all? When I, years ago, I was learning how to box. I went to Kevin Rooney. Kevin Rooney trained Mike Tyson. I'm not a great boxer. I didn't do it long enough. I did it as a kid. When I was introduced to jiu-jitsu years ago, the first place I went to, and the only place I've been to since, was the Gracie Jiu-Jitsu Academy, the original one, Torrance, California. Why not go to the best? When I wanted to learn how to power lift, when I really wanted to learn how to power lift, and I wanted to learn what power lifting really was, and not just just know more about the lifts itself, but know more about the culture, I went to Westside Barbell. And that has forever changed my life and opened my eyes up to all kinds of different things. It taught me how to train. We're going to teach you guys how to train today. 
there's not really that many different ways of doing all this stuff. People will try to complicate it and make it seem like there's a million different ways of doing all these things. And there can be, but they're all similar. They're all in a certain category. When it comes to lifting heavy, we have something called max effort work. Right? There's other people that use other methods. There's other people that will have a five-by-five five routine and periodization. And those things are great, and those things work really well. There's people that have figured out how to spread fatigue throughout an entire week or sometimes throughout an entire month. They'll have you squat, bench press, deadlift two or three times in the same week. But those are still, when those people are asking you to do like 80% and more, they're still kind of in the category of some of that maximal effort work or what is called the repetition effort method. Depending on, depending on the percentage. But it's all very similar. We're trying to get a stimulus from lifting heavy, and we're trying to get as many reps and sets in with unbroken form. You don't want your form to break down. You want to get right up to where your form is about to turn to crap. Maybe the last rep or the last set isn't 100% isn't, uh, picture perfect. But when we're talking about how to get stronger, that is the number one mistake I see people doing all the time. Your last rep of your last set should look similar to your first rep of your first set. Does that make sense? Another huge mistake I see people make is as they're working up towards their max, they go 45, 25, 45, 25, 45, 25, and they just missed out on getting a lot of extra work in. Let's say they failed at 315. Well, the last lift you did was 275. Now we don't have enough work to show. As I mentioned earlier with the math, we don't have enough work to show our, our lift for the day is that we missed 315 and that we ended up with 275 for one or two or three reps. Not enough work to get stronger. Doesn't count. You're off the team. It doesn't work that way. We need more work. So what would make more sense is to do 275, then maybe 295. If 295 looks sketchy, maybe we stay there for a few sets. Never mind what was written down by your coach. Never, think for yourself. Never mind what the program actually says. Never mind the percentage that's actually there because it's just a recommendation. That's all that it is. It's just a recommendation. Use your mind, use your brain, and go by how it feels. Sometimes you'll do a few sets of it, and it will start to feel better. And you'll be able to actually add a little bit more weight than you expected. A lot of times that'll happen too, because your body will be more warmed up. Another way of doing all this stuff is through bodybuilding. So we lift heavy, and we do bodybuilding. Almost every program is similar. Like, like I'm saying, Westside Barbell utilizes max effort work one day. They lift really, really heavy. On another day, they lift really fast. So if I'm going to show you what it looks like in a bench press, they have one day where they go like this. Right? They have another day where they go. And that's it. What they do in between is bodybuilding. When it comes to regular methods, when it comes to uh, periodization, or it comes to some of the stuff that, say, Steph Cohen is sharing, or Chad Wesley Smith, they have days that are light, medium, heavy, and then they have bodybuilding stuff. The only difference is those people usually don't work on speed work, but they still will work on technique. The speed work of, of the Westside Barbell program is designed and it's implemented into the workout to work on being fast and also to work on your form. So make sure somewhere in your training that you're working on your technique as well as your speed, as well as uh, your strength. In my workouts nowadays, I try to always work on my cardiovascular in some sense, my muscular system, just being more jacked, and then some form of strength training. I try to hit all three in each workout, but I have different goals going on for right now. What I want to ask you guys is a uh, simple question here, and I think you guys will be able to help. So what are a few things, um, what are a few things that are really important to getting uh, bigger and stronger? What you got? Sleep. sleep. There we go. I think I heard someone say nutrition. So we heard sleep and nutrition. These are things that are important to being like bigger and stronger, just more efficient in the gym. What else we got? Consistency. There we go. What else we got? Time under tension. Time under tension. There we go. Lifting heavy. Lift and heavy. So these things are pretty commonly known, right? 
everybody kind of already knows them already, and that's why I prepared them right here for you already. So no reason to have a seminar, is there? <laughs> now, the point of that is just that we already know what's right, usually, right? It's just a matter of execution. It's just a matter of doing it. You know, what, what are... We're going we're gonna to lift in just a, just a few minutes here. But what are a few things that are blocking you right now from lifting? What's the, what are the few things that are messing up your consistency? What do we got? Work. Work. Yeah. And, you know, I've had people, so I've had people share this with me before where they'll say, man, I, I wish I could, wish I could, you know, do some of what you're doing, but uh, I can't really follow the diet because I have kids. I'm like, I got kids, you son of a bitch. I got kids too, and they got goldfish and uh, cookies, and they got everything else out, and I, I have to abstain from eating all that junk a lot of times. Um, work, sometimes you get really busy with work, right? Sometimes you really end up working more than normal, but like how do we, what's reasonable? You know, what's, sometimes, sometimes things happen in life where it is out of your control to do certain things, but I would say that work isn't a great excuse. I've had one guy tell me he couldn't lose weight because he works nights, and he's pretty heavy. And I'm like, okay, well, so if what you're saying is true, then everybody that you work with that works nights would be as big as you or bigger, right? And they would have the same exact struggle, but that's not even true, right? So you have to kind of think about, like, what's reasonable? Like, is work really in your way? Do you work at 6 a.m.? Is it reasonable to work to try to lift before getting to work at 6 a.m.? Probably not. Uh, is it reasonable to uh, work towards the end, you know, try to get a workout in at the end of the day? Probably. And then most people, everyone has different schedules and stuff, but most people work during the week and have some sort of reprieve on the weekend. There's two days a week that you can get in right there. You got a Saturday, Sunday, or whatever days it is that you have off. Most of us have at least two days a week where we don't have a normal work schedule. So there would be two days. Now we just need to find one or two more. And then what else, you know, what else could you do to encourage yourself to get in some form of exercise? You could start to have low-hanging fruit, and you could start to have uh, walks or going for a run. I mean, to go for a run, you need socks and a pair of sneakers, and you can go run just about anywhere. So that lowers the barrier of entry into exercising. You could do body weight movements at your house. I mean, I know these are some things that we don't want to do, but they're things that you could do, and they're things that you probably should do. So there's, there's, those are things that are, can be simple, simple to implement. Um, some other things that might, might block you from training. What else have we got? Yeah, sometimes, sometimes, look, we all get lazy, right? We all have these, these times in our life where we've uh, got these heightened senses and we're super fired up, Maybe the sun's out, and maybe just everything's going your way, and you feel great, and you get to the gym, and it's not a, it's not a problem to, uh, to get in a couple kick-ass training sessions. But we have all kinds of different things that happen in our life where we sometimes are, it's hard to build that consistency. Try to figure out things that you like to do. I was just talking earlier about how some of this, you can deprive yourself so much that you're fasting, you're not e eating any sugar. You're on a keto diet. You're doing cardio, and you're, you're not uh, ever drinking any alcohol. Or just like maybe there's some things that you have cut out that are fun for you that you enjoy doing, but you cut all of them out. Well, that makes it really hard. I'm not saying you should go out and drink a lot or anything like that, or I'm not saying you should go out and eat a lot of junk either, but maybe there has, maybe there has to be a reasonable balance of all this stuff in order for you to kind of get what you want. But you're also going to have to recognize that some of these desires that we have are going to pull us away from our goal. You want to kind of stop yourself, pump the brakes every once in a while, and say, how does this help? How does this hurt? How is this helping me towards my goal? How is this hurting me towards my goal? Those are questions you want to kind of ask yourself as you start to go throughout your day. And one simple way of trying to control all this stuff is to take it one meal at a time. What's the next meal in front of me? What am I going to eat for that moment? And then even beyond that, being prepared. If we were to load the bar up to 400 pounds right now on the bench press, I would be able to bench press it. Just because I'm prepared to do that. My body knows how to do that. I'm prepared for it. 
it's actually not even, uh, it's, not, it's not great. And even if it was 500 pounds or 600 pounds, it's not really about being great. It's just about a consistency that I've ingrained into my body to, to know how to do that. Just like somebody else could pick up a guitar and, and, and rock out on it, right? It's not really necessarily impressive. It's just that they, that's what they taught themselves over a long period of time. They have a consistency with it. They know how to do it. They're prepared for it. And so you should be preparing yourself each and every day for what your day is going to look like the day before, and sometimes even the week before. Every day you know approximately where you're going to be, where you're supposed to be, and when you're supposed to be there. Some people say, not me, man. My schedule's crazy. I think you're full of shit. I think that you, have, you have, at least have some idea of where you're going to be and what your day looks like. And so it doesn't make any sense if you have goals in terms of your nutrition for you to leave your house every single day without a plan. You should always have a plan. You should always have some of your meals prepped and stuff like that. So some of these things that block us from getting momentum towards doing the things that we love to do, a lot of times they're really just excuses, and you need to start taking those excuses, and you need to start throwing them in the garbage, because we all have them. Every single day when I come in here at 4 a.m. and train, I have as many problems as everybody else. Things hurt. Things are annoying. Uh, it's frustrating to get here sometimes, but you get here, you shut your mouth, and you do the work. And also, along with that, think about if I blurt out that my shoulder hurts, or if I blurt out this to him over here, how does that, how is that helping him at all? Is it, is it pulling him down? Does it actually help me to release this? Because maybe I do have something that's really bad that I want to talk about. Well, maybe as long as it's not an emergency, maybe I just wait till after the workout to talk to him about it. Then we can both bitch, and I can say, hey, this hurts, and he'd be like, oh my God, dude, my freaking knee is killing me too. I, I, thought, I thought you were uh, getting through the workout okay. I didn't know you were dying too. That kind of stuff. Save it for, save it for later and try to think about how is this you know, going, to, going to help my situation along. We're going to uh, break up into some groups. We got some uh, workouts for you guys to do. We have, we're going to work on some supersetting. And we're going to work on, because in powerlifting, it takes us a really long ass time. As I already said a thousand times, it takes a long time to get through the bench. It takes a long time to get through a squat or a deadlift workout. So when we get through a deadlift workout, we have to try to move quickly in order to get the workout in so it doesn't take five hours. When I was powerlifting and that's all I cared about, it was always, I don't care how long this workout takes, it's regardless of time, I'm just going to be here for four or five hours and this is what it takes to be great and I'm, I'm committed to that. I don't do that anymore. I don't, and not everyone needs to be at the gym for four or five hours and I'm sure you're going to uh, hate your life if you end up at the gym for too long. So. A lot of times we'll superset when we're done with our lift just to get more work in less time. So a simple example of that is we might squat, and then we're done squatting, we might do leg presses and leg extensions back and forth. When we're done doing a bench press, we may uh, do some dumbbell bench press and lat pulldowns back and forth. A lot of times, well, sometimes it's an opposing muscle, and sometimes it's the same muscle. Kind of depends on the goal. If it's a weak muscle, if it's a muscle that we want to try to bring up, it's a muscle that is small or not as strong as we want or not as conditioned as we'd like, then we may do two exercises in a row that hammer that same muscle group. We may even do three exercises in a row. Sometimes we will even uh, do drop sets. And here at Super Training, we have these, this, uh, these awesome pieces of equipment, this prime equipment, where we get to adjust the, uh, the lever on it, and it has a different angle, so it's hard in the middle, hard at the top, or hard in the beginning, and that just changes up the variable just enough to where it just kicks the crap out of you. So we have a shoulder press for that, we have a bench press for that, we got a curl machine for that, and we use those all the time in here. Every single workout that we do in super training involves some form of a main exercise for the day, and then the assistance exercises are usually to bring those lifts up. I know today you guys were uh, hoping that Charles Glass was going to be here. We were hoping that Charles Glass was going to be here, but unfortunately he had something happen uh, in his life, a personal issue, and uh, he wasn't able to make it here. And he was going to teach you guys a lot about bodybuilding. And I didn't, wanna, I didn't want to get out of my own lane, even though I have done a bodybuilding show. I'm, not, I'm nowhere near the expert that Charles Glass is, so I apologize uh, that he wasn't able to make it here today. 
but we're going to give you guys some bodybuilding to do anyway, give you guys some of what we do here at Super Training. And you're going to find a lot of these movements are probably movements that you've done before. A lot of these movements are, are probably things you're fairly familiar with. But as we go around, each one of us that has been in here for a long time is going to share some information with you guys on how to execute the lift maybe slightly differently than what you're used to. And I, I've trained di directly with Charles Glass as well. And I know a lot of the kind of fine-tuning movements that he does. I could show you guys a couple of uh, specific movements that he shared with me. Uh, one time at, at uh, Gold's Gym, and I don't, this makes no sense on why this piece is called a sissy squat. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's ever done a sissy squat, but maybe because it makes you a sissy? I don't know. It's a brutal exercise. But I was doing some of those, and Charles walked by, and uh, he's like, hey, you want me to show you how to do those? And I never really talked to him before. And I was like, holy shit. I'm like, it's Charles Glass. He, Hell yeah, I want to learn from him. And he showed me how to do them the right way. And I did like two reps and I thought I was going to die. And he kept pushing me through. And I ended up doing like a set of 20 reps. And it just absolutely annihilated me. So he, he was really uh, precise with the form and the technique. Much like I was talking earlier about how important that is for powerlifting. It's obviously hugely important in bodybuilding. To, to really learn how to stay connected to the muscle the entire time. I think sometimes as power lifters, we forget how important that is to really stay connected to that bar throughout the entire range of motion. And so as you're going through some of these things today, we do want you guys to have a good workout. We do want you guys to work hard, but also kind of keep in mind, we want to stay connected to the muscle the entire time, and we want to be really paying attention to how everything is supposed to feel. So I think the stations are already all set up for you guys, right? Uh, uh, nope. Quick, there we go. Let's give it up to Mark. Thank you.